Got excited and broke it. <laughs> All right, this is called Sober Alcohol, Honest Politicians, Jesus, and Other Things I Don't Believe In. <laughs> For eight years on every Wednesday night, my CCD class and I would sit in mass, eyes closed with folded hands. The youth leaders who were actually older than Jesus himself told me if I locked my fingers and let them point down, I would be talking to the devil. They constantly nagged, so I kept them up as a reminder of why I was there. We would kneel for an hour in the pews, though I was too young to know what to say when they told me to pray. Our conversations often went like this. Hey, dude. It's me again. Good talk. Occasionally, I'd, blick, I'd break the obligation of keep your eyes closed and search every inch of the vast vault ceiling just to make sure he wasn't watching me, laughing at me, for a poor attempt at a praise. When I accepted communion, I would swallow the bread like it was a medicine that didn't belong in my body, and I'd glance at the wine and wish it was medicine that, and wish it was something that couldn't intoxicate just so I could have a sip. In my confessions, I would orchestrate sins that I didn't commit to receive a penance that I did not deserve because I thought if I had nothing to say, I was a bad Catholic. It was always the same. Two Hail Marys and three Our Fathers. Hail Mary, Hail Mary, Our Father, Our Father, Our Father, words became etched into my mind. My little hands and I were too young to know what these prayers even meant. And on the days I could muster up courage to challenge their wrongs in my world, the answer never swayed from he has bigger things on his mind when, when, when what they meant was he has bigger things on his mind than you. I remember asking one day why some babies die before they were even born, little people who had never had the chance to do anything wrong, and they told me maybe it was okay. Maybe it was for the better. Maybe those babies would die a harsher death outside of the womb and God was just looking out for them. Confusion brewed in my mind. So many holes in his miraculous story sat like colanders in my chest. So why wasn't God looking out for the thousands of children trapped in a system they call foster care? What about these stories that came from the same people who say children in cages don't exist within the barbed wire that holds our country? Wire that is bursting with hundreds of years of injustices. Yet they tell me there is an almighty man who lets it slip past him? Some friend kind that leaves you on red for weeks, no, years at a time. I had been fooled into having a one-ended conversation with myself by these senators of God with nothing but musty air on the other side. They left me to wonder if he was ever really there. What if I had been the one who walked away from the table? What would have happened if I didn't? Still, I'm left wondering these unanswered questions that wait and sit on the threshold of every altar waiting for me. Now our conversations go like this. Hey God, it's me again. It's Hannah. Do you remember me? What's going on? Where are you? Can you hear me? Why won't you help me? Please help me. I promise I'll 